Our next topic is cystic fibrosis. This is one you're going to get asked, pretty much guaranteed. It's on the long arm of uh, chromosome 7. It's an autosomal recessive disease. That's one way they can, they can ask you what chromosome it's on. They can ask you right away, uh, patients with cystic fibrosis, what are the chances of having another affected child? You have to know that it's autosomal recessive. That means that the parents have a 1 in 4 chance of having another affected child. Uh, the gene is the CFTR gene. It's a transmembrane regulator. It has a lot to do with uh, ion shifts. Um, the, uh, there are a lot of other genes. This is the most common one, and we can't test for all the mutations. Although we do have blood tests for cystic fibrosis, we can't test for all the mutations. So the best test, boy, does that sound like a test question, is going to be a sweat chloride. Okay? These babies will have chronic airway obstruction. Uh, they can have malabsorption, and they can have failure to thrive. They can have a myriad of manifestations. It's a multi-organ disease. They fail to clear out mucus secretions. The old term for cystic fibrosis was pulmonary mucoviscidosis. And that was the description of the secretions. They were very thick mucoid secretions. They're hard to cough up. They can lead to infections. They can lead to atelectasis and pneumonias. They also have a low water content in their secretions. And the sweat has an increased chloride content or salt content. And that's why that test is such a good uh, uh, diagnostic test. They will, uh, most of them will have pulmonary pathology. Some patients present with GI pathology. Uh, those tend to do a little bit better, but most patients will have some kind of respiratory pulmonary pathology. They don't do as well. Other things that you can find, polyps, okay? Look for that on the exam. They love to throw that in, nasal polyps. Okay? They can also have some pancreatic dysfunction. Some patients will develop um, basically we can develop uh, diabetes mellitus and because of the pancreatic dysfunction uh, some patients because of exocrine pancreatic dysfunction they can develop uh, malabsorption. Um, they can also have uh, rarely biliary cirrhosis. Uh, the males tend to be uh, sterile. Depending on the age depends on how they present. In the newborn period, the most common presentation will be meconium ileus. So there is a plug of meconium that sits there, and it prevents the distal uh, uh, intestinal tract from, uh, from developing. So you'll have a microcolon. These are patients that will not stool right away or in the first 24 hours after birth. Um, later on in life, that because of their um, malabsorption, they tend to have these large, greasy, fatty, really foul-smelling stools that tend to float uh, on the, uh, in, the, in the toilet. Um, they can actually have rectal prolapse. Uh, they also have uh, vitamin deficiency, and this leads to malnutrition problems. They can have jaundice and ascites, and as I mentioned, they can have diabetes mellitus. This is a patient with meconium ileus. Baby has not stooled. First thing you're going to do, get an abdominal film. We discussed this in Chapter 1, and this is all distended bowel uh, from meconium ileus. This is a rectal prolapse. Uh, other disease entities can cause rectal prolapse. The other thing that you can notice in this child, besides the rectal prolapse, is the lack of subcutaneous fat, particularly look at the buttocks. Okay? This is from malnourishment and malabsorption. These patients require lots and lots of calories. Here's a child that looks a little bit malnourished. The other thing you can see, probably a little bit short, so they tend to have, they can have failure to thrive. And look at this boy's chest. Okay? They have an increased anteroposterior diameter, a lot of times just from chronic air trapping. Okay? So they will, ha they will have an increased uh, anteroposterior diameter. Uh, you can have hyperresonance on percussion because of the air trapping. You always hear crackles and rows on these ch children. They will have clubbing of the fingers and toes because of chronic hypoxia as opposed to when we talk about asthma. Uh, you can hear expiratory wheezes, and they will have cyanosis, cyanosis later on in life, and have chronic uh, sinusitis. Genitourinary problems. I said this is a, a multi-organ disease. They will have delayed sexual development. The males are sterile for the most part. Uh, they can also have cryptorchidism. Females are also have decreased fertility. Um, these patients, because of the loss of, of salt in the sweat, 
are at really high risk for uh, dehydration in hot weather. Uh, they also uh, need to have lots and lots of fluid intake. These patients go out and play whatever sports, and they need to have lots of fluid intake. They need to uh, uh, take extra salt, and they need to be monitored closely. Many times, parents might tell you that the baby tastes salty when they kiss him or her. So these babies may have chronic uh, persistent pneumonias, and they're always coughing as an infant, and the parents will say, you know, ba a doctor, when I kiss the baby, he just tastes salty. That's a real good clue. The best test is a sweat chloride. As I stated earlier, they're going to have uh, that you can do blood tests for the uh, mutation and the CF gene, but you can't always pick it up, and so therefore the best test is a sweat chloride. Now as an infant, you may not be able to get enough sweat to do a sweat chloride. If a child is born and has meconium ileus, that child has cystic fibrosis till proven otherwise. You can try getting the blood test for the gene. If it's positive, you have an answer. If not, you wait till they're a little bit older, a few months, do the sweat chloride, you have the answer. These patients get very quickly colonized in the lungs with staph and with pseudomonas. Chest x-ray shows hyperinflation, uh, infiltrates, atelectasis. I'll show you an x-ray in a second. Uh, when patients are old enough to do pulmonary function testing, you will see that they have obstructive disease. And again, Staph aureus and then Pseudomonas common, commonly infect the uh, airway. So here we have um, an x-ray, a uh, typical x-ray for cystic fibrosis. Uh, on this side over here you can see uh, air trapping. You see how far down this diaphragm is and it can count a ton of ribs, so there's air trapping here. There's some chronic changes of atelectasis and bronchiectasis uh, and pneumonias here, and there's some stuff over here on the uh, left hilar area. Typical x-ray of cystic fibrosis. You can uh, do some antenatal diagnosis of an uh, cystic fibrosis. You can also test parents for the carrier state, and there is a newborn screen, but again, the best test to diagnose is going to be the sweat chloride test. Treatment of cystic fibrosis, you have a multi-organ system disease, you have to treat multi-organs. Uh, good nutrition is very important. These patients have chronic malabsorption and malnutrition. They uh, uh, will have the fatty stools, they lose vitamins, so they need vitamin replacement, particularly A, D, E, and K. Uh, they also will need uh, enzyme rep uh, replacement, they need uh, pancreatic enzymes replaced. Respiratory, they have very, need very aggressive pulmonary toilet. They need bronchodilators, they need chest physiotherapy, uh, they need to cough their secretions out. Uh, also, uh, recombinant DNAase helps to uh, help uh, break down some of the secretions. There's a lot of uh, white blood cells in the secretions and the DNAase helps to uh, liquefy them basically and the, the patient can cough them up a lot easier. Uh, antibiotics need to be given very aggressively. Treat with uh, antibiotics that will cover staph and pseudomonas. Uh, they can be given orally, IV, and we also have nebulized antibiotics. Um, so it's very meticulous attention to a lot of details, nutrition, uh, infectious, and any other uh, uh, disease, uh, organs that are affected. Uh, most children with cystic fibrosis uh, will uh, uh, live uh, into the tw 20s, uh, sometimes into their 30s. A liver uh, lung transplantation has been attempted in some of these patients also.